I'm Kathy from Applique Corner, and I'm super excited today to have a very special guest in the studio, Miss Margaret Tully, the queen of sergers. Oh. <laughs> really? uh, let me tell you, we wanted to bring you some videos that help you do projects, very special projects on your serger. And who better to ask is Miss Margaret Tully, who wow. happens to live very close by. We get to do projects together, and sometimes we even get to travel together, don't That's we? That's right. That's well, right. Well, ladies, let me tell you that some of the features that you enjoy on your serger, you may not know this, but you can thank Miss Margaret Tully for those features oh, no, on please, your serger. Really. So, oh, no, really? Yeah. Go ahead. Applause. <laughs> I'm so excited about what you're going to share with us today. Oh, I'm so, so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. What a treat to live so close to this lady. We get to be oh. so and so's together. <laughs> we are so it's a and fun so's, thing. aren't we? <laughs> it's a fun thing. You know, today we're just going to go over, I'll just give you an overview of what this is about. We're going to make a crib sheet, but this is about so much more than that. This is a specialty foot for the serger. It's called the elastic applicator foot. It has way too many moving parts. Some of you have seen this. Some of you own an elastic applicator foot. Maybe you don't know how to use it to its full potential, but we're gonna take the mystery out of this today. It can be quite intimidating, but it's really not. That's right. You, you this taught is, me how, yeah. This is the queen of crib sheets. <laughs> now I am, thanks to you. <laughs> Uh, right. If you've ever had a fitted sheet and you really want it to stay tucked in, you want this presser foot. So today we're going to take the mystery out of this presser foot and show you how to have wonderful times with your serger and fun with your sewing friends. We're glad you're here today. As for cutting the fabric for your crib sheet, keep in mind that the top of a crib mattress measures 27 by 52. And typically there's a nine inch drop and tuck. Mm -hmm. That means the side of the mattress and the amount of fabric that tucks in under the mattress. So we're going to typically cut a piece of fabric that's 45 by 70. From each corner, that'd be four corners of this piece of fabric, we're going to cut a nine inch square that's from all four corners of your fabric. And at the serger, we'll bring these sides, one corner at a time, we'll bring those sides, right sides together, and serge those with a standard serger overlock stitch. We'll demonstrate that in just a minute. Okay, once you get your fabric cut, and your four corners cut out of your fabric. You're going to fold your corners right sides together and you're simply going to serge. That's right. All right. <laughs> to the serger, we're set we up for an overlock stitch. That means we're going to be serging on the cut edge. We're going to start at the outside edge of your of your sheet and serge to the inside corner. And we will repeat this step for all four corners. Let me turn this to the right side. So this corner you see represents one corner of the mattress top. You're on the way. <laughs> okay, I know that we all don't have the same serger, but for this video, I'm using the Baby Lock Ovation. And so some of you may have a serger that's from Baby Lock. You may be fortunate enough to have the Baby Lock Ovation or one of the other eight thread sergers from Baby Lock. I want to go over the settings. This is an, like I said, this is an overlock stitch. That means we're going to be stitching along the cut edge of cloth. So on the right hand side of the serger, on the outside edge, we will have stitch selector A. That means that the left needle is in. 
as we go down the right hand side of the serger on the outside. The differential feed is going to be set on in for normal. As we travel across to the presser foot toe area, you're going to notice that there are two knobs and a flat button. The big fat knob at the bottom is your stitch length control. And as you see, when I turn this knob, I have a stitch range of one to four. One being the shortest length and four being the longest. If we go past zero, you'll see that you have another stitch range of one to four. And this time the stitch range has a circle around it. Sometimes your baby lock sergers will have a shadow around it. This means you're in the rolled hem area. The stitch forming finger has been removed, so now you're in the, the rolled hem area. We want an overlock, so we're going to put this on a standard stitch length of two and a half with no ring around it. This flat button controls your cutting blade or the cutting system. I'm going to open all these doors. You don't have to open the doors to see this, but you get a better view. This is the cutting blade. If I turn this button just with two fingers, and I turn that button so you can read the word lock, did you see that the cutting blade went down into the locked position? I'll turn this button so you can't read the word lock. And as I turn the hand wheel, you'll notice that as the serger takes stitches, the cutting blade re-engages. Do you see this? So with two fingers, you can make all the adjustments you want to on your baby lock serger because all of the controls are on the outside. Like I said, I just opened these doors so you can have a clearer view of what's going on in here. Now we're left with this smaller knob closer to the toe of the presser foot. This is your stitch width control. I will, I'm going to turn this as far forward and as far back as I can. And I want you to notice, please, that the needles for the serger are back here and of course the cutting blade is here. Please watch the needles and the cutting blade. Do you see that the cutting blade is moving but the needles are not? That's because sergers are straight stitch machines. Some of us remember when we just had straight stitch sewing machines and the needles went up and down in the same little hole in the throat plate all the time. That's the way serger needles operate. So when we change the stitch width or the cutting width, it's just the cutting blade that moves. And that's important to know. It's going to help you as you operate your serger. Now then, this time as I turn this stitch width control, I want you to notice that for every setting, there are two sets of numbers. There's a larger number and a larger print, and a smaller number and a smaller print. And that's true all the way around this stitch width knob. Do you see that? Those numbers are distance in millimeters from the cutting blade to a needle position. If the left needle is in, then you'll concern yourself with the larger number and the larger print distance in millimeters from the cutting blade to the left needle position. If only the right needle is in, then you'll concern yourself with the smaller number in the smaller print, again, distance in millimeters from the cutting blade to the right needle position. So that takes some mystery out of the numbers on the cutting blade. Now that you understand the numbering system, let's go to this letter M, M for marrowing. 
because baby lock has its origins in the industrial machines, we keep Mr. Merrow's name on our sergers to remind us of that. If we want a quarter inch seam allowance on a baby lock serger, if the left needle is in and we put that stitch width on M for marrowing, we have a perfect one quarter inch seam allowance from the cutting blade to the left needle position. That will help you. You will use a quarter inch seam allowance often. You'll use it for quilt piecing. You'll use it for children's clothes construction, knit garment construction, heirloom sewing. There are even some tailoring techniques that call for a quarter inch seam allowance. So this is handy to know. If you only have the right needle in and you put the cutting width as wide as it will go to the small print 5.0, now you have a perfect one quarter inch seam allowance from the cutting blade to the right needle position. You see how easy Baby Lock makes everything for us? So because we have the left needle in, we're going to restore that cutting width to M for marrowing. We have a standard stitch length and the cutting blade is engaged. And we're ready for an overlock stitch. Now we're going to serge yet another corner on our crib sheet. We have our fabrics right sides together. The presser foot is down. Always be sure your presser foot is down before you start surging. You surge from the outside edge of the sheet to the inside corner of the cut. We'll turn this to the right side. And again, another corner that represents the top of your crib mattress. We're on our way. All right, this is the specialty foot known as the elastic applicator foot. When you take it out of the package, it's quite intimidating, but we'll just break this apart, break it down like you would an elephant sandwich. We'll just take this one bite at a time. There are a couple of screws on the top, and here is the law about screws on top of a presser foot or an attachment. Anytime you see screws on top of a presser foot or an attachment, it means something is adjustable, so adjust it. So the small screw right here is going to allow us to move this fence left and right to accommodate the width of the elastic that we're going to load into the presser foot. You see that? Is that showing? Okay. This fence will slide back and forth and it will accommodate elastic that's one inch wide. If you want to use elastic that's wider than one inch, this is your screwdriver. That's your screw, you can remove this fence and you can use any width elastic that you want to. Okay, that takes care of this little screw. This big old honking screw on the top, this controls the amount of stretch that's put onto the elastic as the elastic goes into the stitch. This is an overlock stitch. So, if you remember this highly technical engineering term, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. If you'll turn this knob to the right, it gets tighter and there's more stretch onto the elastic as it's sewn into the stitch. If you'll turn this knob to the left, it's looser and there's not quite so much stretch put onto the elastic. So that takes care of the two larger screws. This is a feature, if you'll see that red hash mark on the large screw, and then you'll see the gradated hash marks on the collar here, this will help you set and reset the amount of stretch, depending on the kind of elastic you use. 
Now then, here comes the trick. Loading the elastic into the presser foot. Uh, we are in Florida currently, and so in Florida we have alligators. And alligators love to eat rabbits and golfers. <laughs> My husband works on a golf course, so we're not going to talk about the golfers that the alligators eat right now, but we are going to talk about the rabbits. So I'm going to take this elastic and make a rabbit's ear. And as you see, the mouth of this presser foot is a lot like an alligator's mouth. And when we open it, can you see that you can see the lower lip here? That alligator has a lower lip. So we're going to open that alligator's mouth and slip that rabbit's ear right on to that lower lip. You see? We're going to bring that elastic up and over the fence. The tail of the elastic comes out behind the, the, end, the heel of the presser foot. And all presser feet on a serger attach from the left. So this is a snap-on foot. We'll just slide that presser foot onto the serger and it's ready to surge the elastic onto our sheet. Okay, Margaret has all of our four corners stitched together and now we're ready to put on the elastic. Mm -hmm. And Margaret, there are lots of questions. People ask whether to put the elastic on the right side or the Maybe. wrong side, the inside or the outside. And there's really no right answer. The industry does it both ways. You can go to your linen closet mm -hmm. and check it out to see. But today we're gonna to put it on the right side of the fabric, the pretty side. That's right. And, and you'll be able to see it better in the video that way too. But it's really just preference. And so pick that's which right. way you like it and that's the right way. That's right. <laughs> I've made some adjustments to the settings. I've turned this stitch width knob to get the widest stitch the left needle is in and the stitch width is on 7.5 and I've made the stitch length as long as it will go to the 4.0 with no ring around it. The presser foot is up and the needles are up and I'll load the fabric in under the presser foot and under the elastic. Guide the cut edge of your sheet along this right hand edge of the sewing table. You don't have to guide this elastic at all. That's what the presser foot does. It protects the elastic from the cutting blade. It guides the elastic into the presser foot and puts the appropriate amount of stretch onto the elastic. The presser foot is down and here we go. Stop every so often and rearrange your hands and your fabric and continue. I'll bring part of this sheet around to the front of the presser foot so that you can see how the elastic is applied. It's encased in that 3 8 inch wide stitch and they're stretched to the elastic and the sheet and we'll continue on around the edge of the sheet until we get to the beginning of the elastic. As we approach the end of our surging here and get back to the beginning of the elastic, I'm going to trim off this piece of the elastic that didn't get surged at the very beginning. And I'm going to continue surging until the cutting blade cuts off this thread chain. Oh, can you see that the cutting blade is cut off that thread chain? Now I'm going to lock the cutting blade and continue feeding the elastic into the stitch. So now there is elastic being fed onto the top of existing elastic. So 
So I'll let just that amount of elastic feed through. There is no cutting blade, so the, the good stitches are not being trimmed away. Raise the needles, raise the presser foot, and scooch, S-C-O-O-C-H, scooch. I have no fabric under the fall of the needles. I'm going to use the hand wheel to sink the needles in air. The presser foot is still up, and I'm going to chain off. You see? So that's how we have a clean finish here. And when we bring that thread chain to the back, you won't be able to see that we trailed off. If you bring it to the front, you won't see that we trailed off on the back. There are several ways to deal with this thread chain. There are chemicals, a seam sealant, you could take a large eyed needle and thread that thread chain into the stitch to hide that. But there are several ways to deal with this. But the beautiful part is that your custom crib sheet is now finished. It's so easy. I now want to leave this in the capable hands of the crib sheet queen. Miss Kathy made so many beautiful custom crib sheets for her granddaughter. I did. Now, Margaret, we want to share with them what type of elastic That's that right. we used. You taught, you, you taught me about this magic elastic. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. It's, it's three eighths of an inch elastic, but this is cotton elastic. Mm -hmm. And it in the, the label says cotton swimwear elastic. But this particular elastic is natural in color. It's not the bright white elastic that you might be used to. And it withstands a lot of chlorine, uh, bleach, right. uh, lots of detergents, and hot, hot washings that your crib sheet is going to need to withstand. <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> for sure. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, but your, your, all of your sergers will uh, cover a 3 8 inch elastic, the widest mm -hmm. cover stitch for sergers universally is 3 8 of an inch. That's right. So no worries there. But look how beautiful this turned out and how quickly. Now we were making a video, so there were lots of starts and stops, but I can now make a crib sheet, thanks to this wonderful lady, in about 15 Please, really? minutes. <laughs> Seriously, uh, she taught me how to make uh, crib sheets for grandbabies, and I've probably made seven or eight of them, I guess. She uh, is, you, I'm gonna enter her in the fair. <laughs> that's right. She's wonderful. You could have crib sheets for every day of the week, if you, if you would like, and we know how many changes and washings we need. But think of all the money that you're going to save. Um, right. Some designer you really crib sheets. Will. They may cost twenty, thirty, forty dollars, and upwards, especially in the designer fabric. You get the color you want. That's it right. matches your nursery. That's Just right. custom sheets. So, it's wonderful. Here you go, ladies. And let me also say that Margaret is going to be joining us in the future for more videos using sergers. So if you ever wanted to learn more about your serger or you don't have a serger and you want to dive in uh, now's the time to get one because margaret's going to be teaching us lots of things in the future how how to use our sergers and how to do wonderful projects so thank you for today oh, thank my, you so much my great and I joy cannot, i had the best time, the next time. So, we had a good time thank you for joining us <laughs>